Really want to know who Superman is? <laughs> Watch this. Oh! Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Brian with Superman's Comics, and we have a very special episode of Superman's Comics and Friends. He's been on the channel before. I've been on his channel multiple times, so it's kind of like if you watch college football, we call it a home and home, so it was about time that we had him on Simple Man's Comics, introduce him to the Simple Man's Comics family. But we got Steve Berklin from Burke Family 54 Comics. How you doing, buddy? Dude, I am doing well, and it's morphing time, and I love that sports analogy because you and I are a big sports fan. I, I, I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't follow Kansas State too much, but I know Florida State didn't have the best of, of seasons. Yeah, we didn't have a very good season either. <laughs> But I will say, we'll just start this off speaking of sports and we'll just start off being controversial right now. I'm a big San Francisco Giants fan and I think Barry Bonds should be in the Hall of Fame and let the comments flow because I know we're going to get some on that one. <laughs> Either way, Steve, for the Simple Man's Comics viewers, tell, let them know a little bit about yourself and about your channel and what all they can find on your channel and where they can find you. Okay. Okay. Uh First off, I, I do agree Barry Bonds should be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and I'm a Royals fan, so I remember the 2014 World Series where we lost to the Giants. Never get over that. But, I'm a huge uh, Bo Jackson fan, though. What's that? I'm a huge Bo Jackson fan. Oh, so. Bo Jackson's the, the greatest athlete of all time. Anyways, I'm Steve from Burke Family 54 Comics, and I've been on YouTube for about two years now. I've been collecting comic books for five years. Um, if you can't tell from you know behind me, next thing, I'm a big Power Rangers fan. I love the Ninja Turtles. I love Batman. I love The Flash. I love The Flash TV show. It's my favorite show that there is. Um, so if you come to my channel, you're going to see unboxings. You're going to see live streams. Uh, I'm actually doing a 2,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm giving away a Batman 24 and a CGC 9.8, a Venom 25 second print in 9.8, and a Team and T last run in number one because I'm really, really close to 2,000 subscribers. So go ahead and make sure you head over to my channel and subscribe. I'm giving away as soon. I'm giving it away as soon as I get to 2,100 subscribers. So there's definitely still time to do that. But you know, I'm just like everyone else. Uh, I like to have fun here on YouTube. I like to talk comic books, hang out with friends, do unboxings, talk about new comics, talk about investing in comics, and then watch other channels like yours. I've been a big fan of yours for a long time now. So I'm excited to be on here to talk comic books with you. Yeah, we always talk about how great the comic community is and how great the YouTube comic community is. So it's great to have you on here. And I will have a link in the description of this video so where you can click on it and go to Steve's channel and subscribe. And as he just mentioned, he's a huge Power Rangers fan. Now, big fan of Power Rangers on this channel. When Jack was on here, we always talk about Power Rangers too. But that's not to say that we're the biggest fans. Just like if you ever watch Pawn Stars and they brought something in, they're like, you know, I don't know too much about this. I'm, I got a guy though. Steve is our Power Ranger guy that we'd reach out to and get that information from. So it's great to have you on this channel. And for the viewers, you said you've been on for about two years now. I mean, this is kind of cliche and a lot of people ask it, but what made you want to start a YouTube channel? Oh, man, that is a great question. I would say, you know, I started initially just doing it on Instagram after about two, two and a half years on Instagram. Sorry, about two and two and a half years of uh, collecting. I started an Instagram and then I saw some people on Instagram talking about their YouTube channel. And I was like, you know, I want to go check this out. And I remember uh, Matt Thanatos had Reggie Collects on his channel before Reggie got huge. And they were just hanging out, talking comic books showing off what books they got recently and people were hanging out in the chat talking. And I was like, wow, this is a lot of fun. Like I really, really enjoy just like the community aspect of it. It's like more than just comments on someone's Instagram post. It's like getting involved. It's, it's, it's happening, you know, every single second. It's, I don't know. This it seemed like a lot of fun. And then I started watching comic Tom, your channel, Bueller, uh, John's Comics of Kids is the person that actually told me you should start a YouTube channel. And I decided to go ahead and give it a go. If you go back and watch some of my early videos, they're pretty bad. I didn't have a comic book room then. I actually had, I just had like a little area where I put them in, in my bedroom where I put all my comics. I had like one, maybe two short boxes at the time. So whenever I did my videos, I'd always bring them out to the uh, kitchen and I would do them out there. And uh, it, it was it was kind of a funky setup. And then I decided to go ahead and make a comic book comic book room and i've really really enjoyed it and i just love being on here talking to people 
and making videos and helping others is I've, I made a lot of like how to videos or investing videos where people were like, man, you really, really helped me, uh, you know, in whatever thing that they're doing. So I don't know. I just really like YouTube and I like hanging out and just meeting people and just the whole community aspect of it. Yeah, it's always great, especially when you get feedback like that from people saying, hey, your channel's helped me this way. I always say if subscribers and views, yes, it's a great thing. But if you have one subscriber and one viewer and that person is appreciating the content you're creating, that's what it's all about. And then you just grow that. And the community, I always say community is greater than subs views because if you have a bunch of subs but you only have a sense of community it, it's kind of like it feels like you're missing something there and you said you have a comic book room what i think is more important is I hate to say it because i'm the same way but your wife lets you have a comic book room <laughs> yes 100 percent. yes this is the office the comic book room we have one spare bedroom in our house and she lets it she lets me have it be my comic book room so my wife is pretty awesome and it's funny because um my wife saw how I started a comic book room down here and it's kind of grown and like outside now on the walls, I have uh, Funko pops and then I have some sports memorabilia. And then right behind this wall behind me is like a bigger basement den. And like last year when I was kind of, I, I tend to clean the office up annually around Christmas break. But last year she's like, why don't you just move this stuff into the bigger den and then make this like a spare bedroom. And, you know, I got that like puppy dog, like, nice really but then i thought about the work it would take <laughs> to move this stuff and i was like no nah, i'm good because i got a file cabinet full of comics and stuff like that sure. but, uh, it's it's nice to know that options there and i was worried because next thing you know it'll start creeping up <laughs> out of the basement into the kitchen and yep. it just seems like it's just going ever on. growing the collection is ever growing and it's becoming more disorganized by the day because yes. you're always getting more stuff that you're adding to the collection so i have a pile of books behind me that i need to organized and put away and i just haven't done it so and then also you, you mentioned there's a lot of similarities between the channel because you mentioned you're a fan of power rangers your teenage mutant ninja turtles batman a lot of people are fans like that but here on this channel we also talk about those titles a lot not so much batman i'm digging the tynan run but i also like the tom king run which a lot of people didn't that's so. a hot take that is a hot take <laughs> I enjoyed the first 50 issues, but the last 35 just were not, were not good. Since 50 through 85, I was not a huge fan of Tom King's run. But before that, I thought it was pretty good. So. Yeah, it was kind of like um, the Walking Dead show for me where I liked it when it started off. And then in the middle part, it was kind of like, hey, is this character building? Or where is this going? And then I kind of got back into it towards the end. But yeah, Tynan came out like gangbusters on there. and It's oh, been yeah. fantastic. Oh, yeah. I've loved Tynan's run since he took over. 86 and it's coming back with issue 106 in March. And I'm really excited about that. He's bringing in all these new characters, the designer punchline ghost maker, who's actually sticking around. I wasn't a big fan of like the last issue with him, issue 105 of how he's kind of like the new Robin. Uh, but overall I've really enjoyed James Tynan's writing on that man. He's, it seems like far superior uh, than the previous writer in my opinion. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> now, now let me ask you this because um and then i'll answer the same question but do you consider yourself a collector first and then like a speculator investor or i don't want to say flipper but i know you sell some books but what do you kind of view yourself as within the comic book community i would definitely consider myself a collector and reader more because like whenever i make my top five or top ten list of books that i'm getting for the year I hardly ever get them all. Like I usually get about a third of them. Um, it's because I just like to pick up weekly books and read them. I really, really enjoy reading books more than anything else. Like I love obviously having slabs and big key issues, but I actually enjoy reading them more. I do investing videos because people like them and they get views for me. And I do invest in some books too. I don't really like to sell books very often. Like I am doing an auction um tomorrow but i usually only do like one a month or one every other month and it's usually i usually sell books that i just don't care about very much but overall like i am not a flipper i used to be i feel like everyone at some point used to be a flipper like they're like okay let me go see this this top 10 cbsi list that that yeah. <laughs> supplements comics is putting out let me see what's on there okay i'm gonna go get that and flip it for double like yeah. i used to do that and i feel like a lot of people did too but i'm not really into that anymore i just like, I just like reading the books and I like collecting them 
and I just like enjoying them. Yeah, I would consider myself the same. I would consider myself most of the same way. I I tend to think a reader first, collector. Uh, I did at one point was in, into flipping for a while. I feel like an old man now because I'm like, oh, that's kind of a young man's game. It's just I, I did the Wednesday Warrior got stuff, tried to, you know, get more into speculation and and, and, and flip books and make money on it. Uh, but then I just I think I just kind of came back around to like that flipping speculation. It's fun, but man, it's volatile out there and and people have some opinions. And if you might say something like your own opinion and why you like a book and why you're picking it up. <laughs> get ready because sometimes they they come out and they, they're they looking for scalps and it's like oh you're full of crap man where did you get from this and i'm like it's just my own opinion if it doesn't pan out it doesn't pan out i thought that's what speculation meant but that's what i'm picking up yeah so. like when i make my top 10 speculation like like books to invest in for the month like i compile that list myself based off of what like people in my lcs are talking about or what i'm seeing people online talk about it's not necessarily like books that I'm personally investing in, though I did recently do a video talking about five books that I invested in. If I'm going to invest in a book, meaning like I'm going to buy it at either a low price and then try to sell it at a high price, or I'm just buying it at a low price because I know it's going to go up, I'm usually only going to do that on a book that I personally like and enjoy. Like For instance, Venom 9 is one of those books. I really enjoy Venom. Like overall, Donnie Cates has killed this round. I'm really sad it's ending. I really also enjoyed Dylan Brock, who makes his first appearance in Venom 9. And there's spec about, out there about him taking over as Venom going forward. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but it, it does seem like it's likely. I did get a copy of that at a very low price, and I did great, and it came back at 9.8. And I obviously invested in that, but that's not to say that I'm going to sell it. But that's how I picture myself. If I'm going to invest in a book, I'm going to invest in it because I like the book and I like the character. I don't like investing in books or characters that I don't personally like or enjoy or want to keep in the collection. I think another thing that had an effect on me also was once you start a YouTube channel and then you start being able to have conversations with creators and people that work on these books, you, you almost get a personal attachment to them. So you want to, Hey, I'm going to check that out. I talked to them. They, I really enjoyed the information they provide on that book. And then when you read the book, not only do you like the story, but like I said, you have like, hey, you know, I, I have almost a, a, a personal relationship now. I've talked to how the creators, what they went through to get this out, what they went through to create it, how long they took to write it, what the artist did to, and just create the story, the cover, the pages. It kind of adds to that sense of, hey, man, you know, I like this book on its own, but now that I have that extra relationship with those creators i like it all, all that much more and i want to support those creators and a lot of people are like oh well you know you're just kind of pushing that book i don't ever push a book i always say buy what you like that's always what we say and i'm talking about it because i like it it's not like you're going to talk about a book because you don't like it right sure that's true that is true i remember we, we did an interview at one point it did happen where we interviewed kyle higgins and I got to talk to him about his Power Rangers run. And I had all these questions about it because he did zero through like issue 31 that included Shattered Grid and a couple annuals as well. And it was really, really cool to get his insight into creating those books and creating, you know, that multiverse and the Shattered Grid event and whatnot. And it was also really cool to hear from him. And we also got an advanced copy of Radiant Black and that book. It's coming out very soon. It is absolutely dynamite. It's, I already, like, I was already going to think it was a really good book, but also getting to hear him talk about it and explain it and how it like hits home for him made it that much more awesome for me. Like you said, getting to know the creator, why they created it and how they created it. I just felt like it's a lot more fun when you get to do that. Yeah, that was a great interview. It was a little, it was a long interview. <laughs> we saw Kyle it went from daylight to nighttime and then I went to edit it and somewhere I went to clean up footage on my desktop and I actually deleted the raw file and it's like I felt I'm to blame I'm the dumbass that deleted the footage <laughs> and I've caught flack from it from for multiple people but uh yeah I sincerely apologize about that and we even had Radiant Black talked about on this channel on the Final Word Cutoff Show. And just like Steve just said, the fantastic book. It's kind of like if you're a fan of Invincible, if you're a fan of Power Rangers, if you just like Kyle Higgins, it's one you're going to want to pick up, right? 
Absolutely, man. I that you said it. You said it great, man. If you like Power Rangers, Invincible. If you if you like uh, like a young person going through struggles, I think you're really gonna like this book. The character is very relatable, and it's just a lot of fun, and it's colorful as well. So. And the great thing about it is Cow has written great stories, a lot of licensed properties. Here he's getting to do his creator own work. So he really he gets to flesh out the characters and create his own, own universe with it, right? Absolutely, man. I, I think that's what's neat about the creator own things is you get to create your own universe the way you want it. And Skybound is really letting them do that here with Radiant Black. And I think it's going to be an awesome book. I cannot wait to talk about it more when it comes out do a preview of it and a review. I think a lot of people are going to like it. There's a ton of really awesome covers for that too. Gani Montez, who did a lot of those Power Ranger covers, did one for Radiant Black too. And I'm looking forward to that book a lot. Absolutely. So another question I have for you, what is, well, it's a two-part question. What is your grail book that you own? And if there's a grail book that you're currently searching for? Oh, man. So, uh, I have a hard time answering that question. There's, there's a few books that I'm searching for right now. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name three that I own and three that I'm looking for. So one of the grail books that I own is Raphael Number 1, the first appearance of Casey Jones. I had that in a CGC 9-2 sign and sketch by Eastman. I love that book. I love the Ninja Turtles. It was a, I watched that show as a kid, and it was awesome. Got into the movies, and I just love the TMNT comics. So that's one of the books that I own that I, it's a, a grail of mine. I also have Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue zero, the one of 50 Green Ranger cover in a CGC 9.8. Love that book. If anyone knows me, I'm a big Green Ranger fan. So getting that back in a 9.8 was pretty awesome. Like it may not be the most expensive book, but to me, it means a lot. And I'm really excited to own that. And then another book that I have is a Brave and the Bold 54, the first appearance of the Teen Titans. I love the Titans show. I love Wally West. I love the Flash. I love all DC characters, but the Teen Titans are just really fun and really relatable. So that's one of the other books that I would say is a grail book of mine. So this year I'm looking for Flash 110, first appearance of Wally West. I want that in like a 3.0 to 5.0, somewhere in there. I'd like a Team and T1 third print. I That's been on my list for like two or three years now. That book is like really, really expensive now. Um, that's the first appearance of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Shredder and Splinter. Um, and then I'm also looking for, like everyone else, I'm looking for an ASM 300, Vet, the first appearance of Venom. I love the Venom character. I love, like I've really gotten into him more in the last year or so than I had in the last couple of years, but those are definitely the three books I'm looking forward to trying to get the most here in 2021. What are you looking forward to getting? Well, I was to? looking up because I got CGC books up here, but I don't have it on the wall, but I was going to uh, show you my... 3.5 copy of flash 110 just to oh <laughs> nice man and i bought it like a year or two ago it was a great price on like i think it was my comic shop my um my grail book that i own is would have to be my journey into mystery 83 cgc 5.0 and i will not recommend anyone do this but when i was going to school for my master's i had a little bit of student loan money left over <laughs> <laughs> so I used student loan money and bought it on eBay and now I was like, I don't care. And I've paid it I've paid off it all off since then. But yeah. That's amazing. Um, the the book that I'm looking for my grail right now, it's is um a Disney. I'm a huge Disney fan, by the way. If anyone watches this channel, they kind of know that. But I want a Disney comics and stories number one. I mean, a 2.0 goes for $25,000, $3,000. So it's like one of those ones where it's like, uh, that's going to be like a good, good, good tax return or something because I can never like manage to like put it on credit or something like that. Maybe if I went back to school for a PhD and got student loans, who knows? <laughs> but that's what I've been looking for. It's in my eBay save searches. And if one comes up, and I want one graded because, because, but the, that time period and stuff, I usually buy graded that way. I don't have to worry about restoration or, or clipping or anything like that. Or paying extra for like the FMV of it, like added on top of the grading service. I get it. I get yeah. that for sure. And we get a lot of viewers out here that are, are new to comics. And you said FMV. You want to explain what FMV is to the viewers? Sure. So FMV is fair market value. There's a few different places you can look that up. 
eBay is the easiest. That's the one that I would recommend the most. You can just like, let's say you're like, okay, is this a good price on this book? So I'm going to go into eBay and I'm going to look up whatever it is. For instance, we'll just say Spider-Man 300 and to have it on the wall and it's a nine, two days. And the guy at the store says, okay, $800. You're like, okay, I'm going to look up at eBay and see what it says. And I always click on sold listings, not regular listings because sold is the only thing that matters. So I'll go through and I'll look at it and be like, okay, is it in the range? Is it not in the range? And then I'll also check gocollect.com. You can look up there, uh, the name of the book and the issue, and it'll give you prices, uh, the graded prices um, for like a 9.2, whatever it is, 9.8, all the way down to 0.5. Uh, and then there's also uh, comicspriceguide.com that gives you the raw value and the graded value. Though that website to me isn't really updated enough to what like the market is. So I typically just look at eBay and go collect the most. So if you're trying to figure out the value, just go to eBay, search up and click on sold listings for whatever book you're looking up or go to gocollect.com and look it up as well. Yeah, eBay is always the great like, um, what do you think? You said easiest, but yeah, it's kind of a, gets you in the ballpark of, of right around. There's a bunch of other sites also. GPA is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, coverprice.com is another one. But yeah, there's a lot of places out there if you wanted to kind of look to say. And it also helps to look when you're not right there at the store, just in case. Because <laughs> if you're looking at eBay and it's a good price, the seller might raise the price on you at that point. Yes, sometimes sometimes that can happen. I, I don't know if that's ever happened to me, but yeah, like w one time, I I'll, I'll tell a quick story. One time I went to a uh, vintage stock here uh, in Kansas and Topeka, Kansas, and they had Batman New 52, one through like whatever. And I bought one through 12 and they had them all listed at uh, just, it was in a bins for cover price. And I know that obviously issue one and two and all of those are going, they were going for way more at the time. They still are. And if I would have pulled it up and, you know, if someone saw me doing that, they probably be like, oh, we need to raise our prices on that. So that, that can happen uh, when you're looking up the FMV on, on a book. But I was able to, I was actually able to get uh, Batman New 52, one through 12 for $28, including tax, because I had a 20% off coupon. So, yeah, that's always a great price. I mean, I'd be happy just to get issue one. <laughs> <laughs> I have two copies of issue one, one uh, that's raw. But I, because I have issues zero through 52 and a new 52 and then all, all the issues from the rebirth run as well. Um, and then I also have a graded copy of issue one from the new 52 and a, and a CGC 9.8. So now earlier you mentioned you're doing a, a live auction on your channel tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. What time does that start? So that is going to be on Thursday, January 28th at 8 PM Eastern on the Burke family 54 comics YouTube channel. We'll hang out for about three hours or so. Um, I'm going to be joined by about five or six uh, sellers, and they're all channel members of mine. Um, I got about 20 channel members, um, and I decided to ask them first if anyone of my Burke family channel members wanted to sell. And I had several that reach out. They're like, yeah, I want to sell stuff. So we're going to do buy it now. So we're going to do auctions, all sorts of stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you want to get some books, head over to the Burke family 54 Comics YouTube channel. Thursday, January 28th, 2021 at 8 p.m. Eastern. Now, do you kind of do that regularly? So I do, I usually do it once a month and normally we do it on a Saturday or Sunday, but it seems like more people are on the internet or YouTube at night during the week than they are on the weekends because on the weekends they're hanging out with their family, they're running errands or watching sports or whatever. And this will be the first time we've actually done it at night. So I'm really look, interested to see how it does and viewers and watchers compared to the weekends, which... Like I was it on a Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon because no one else is usually live. So it seemed like it helped, but at the same time, people are busy. So yeah, we usually do an auction once a month on my channel. And I was just asking also, because we are recording this Wednesday night and I'm hoping to have this edited and up in time so the viewers can see it and join the auction. But in case I don't, they know that you'll have a, another one coming up. And speaking of which, you mentioned you do a lot of unboxings and, and things like that, but you also have some weekly content, right? Thursday shows and conversations and we have multiple people come on and talk, right? So normally we actually have our Thursday night chat on Thursdays. There's <laughs> nothing coming out this week that I am going to buy and review. Like there's maybe one book that is coming out this week that I was going to get 
and review. And so there's nothing really to do a show on this week. And so that's why we're doing an auction on Thursday. But yeah, normally Thursday night at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern is usually when we do our Thursday night chat. We got an auction this time. We have an auction this time. But normally we have a Thursday night chat. I'm, um, I'm usually with uh, Adrian Pandawson, 316, Ryan New Guy, Dustin from Two Brothers Comics used to be on the show. And he's always welcome to come back. And I've had several other people join me. We always just talk about what books we picked up that week. We usually review three books. Um, if Power Rangers comes out, we're going to review that. If Batman comes out, we're going to review that. King and Black comes out, we're going to review that. If Firepower comes out, which is one of my favorite stories and books right now, and that comes out, we always review that as well. Thor is another book we like to review too. It's just a lot of fun. It's, it's my weekly live stream that I do of my subscribers where we just hang out, talk comic books, review them. And then I obviously have lots of other unboxings that I do. Um, I do other live streams too. Um, and I have top 10 videos like I talk about. And I have been doing new comic book day top picks videos. But this, honestly, it's a lot of work and it's not the most fun video to make. So I'm not sure if I'm going to continue doing that or not. But I like to drop daily content or at least five to six videos per week on my channel. Yeah, that's been there. And I know how much work that is for sure. But also make sure you go check out his channel. Like he said, he's so close to 2,000 subscribers, right? Dude, I'm at 1,940 subscribers as of the recording of this video. I'm super, super close. I never thought, honestly, I'd be at 2,000. Like, I'd be as close as I am to 2,000 subscribers. That's something that never crossed my mind when I first started YouTube. When I first started, I had eight subscribers. And after a year, I had 460. I was like, there's no way in heck I'm ever going to get to 1,940. Like I'm really, really close. And I'm, like I said, I'm giving away a Batman 24 and a 98, a Venom 25 second print and 98, and a Team and T last run in number one. And I have a couple sponsors of the channel as well. I have comic book underscore pressing on Instagram. Um, use the code Burke 54 to get free shipping back to you. Tell them Steve sent you and you get free shipping back to you on getting books press. And also the 616 comics.com is a sponsor of my monthly Burke box that goes out to uh, everyone that's a 999 channel member is entered to win. Right now I got like nine or 10. So you have like a one in 10 chance of winning it every single month. And almost every book in that box is sent to me via the 616comics.com. Um, I have some Batman books in there, some Power Ranger books in there, Team and T, a lot of the exclusives they're doing. So we have an awesome time on my channel with comic books, reviewing them, unboxing them, hanging out with friends, all of that. Yeah, and what I thought was really revolutionary is that you said that your Thursday night comic chat is on Thursday nights. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we had another name for it. Like, we called it the Powered Up Comic Book Reviews to go with Power Rangers, but we never, tip, like, ever called it that. It was just easier to just call it the Thursday night chat because you know it's on Thursday night and it's a chat. So, yeah, that's kind of what we called it, called it that. I've been doing it now for about a year now. I'd hate for that to be on Tuesdays. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and I've done live streams on Mondays and Tuesdays and all that stuff. Actually, next week, I believe I'm supposed to be on Three Men in a Basement talking with Roger Levesque. That should be a pretty good time. So yeah, I have a lot of fun on my channel. Thursday nights are awesome. And I don't know if this is, I don't think I've mentioned this yet. I have a variant coming out with Mighty Morphin number four. I'm working with Joel's R Collectibles and the 616comics.com. John was very instrumental in making it happen where we got my logo on the back of one of the um, exclusives there. And we got an awesome Green Ranger cover. It is and it's a huge perfect. key issue. It's a huge key issue because it features the unmasking of the new Green Ranger. That's why they're Spoiled, but it's a key issue. <laughs> it is a key issue. And that's, that's what's really cool to me is like it's, it was going to be cool to me regardless to get my logo on the back of a comic book, but specifically a Power Rangers book because I'm a huge Power Rangers fan, specifically the Green Ranger, and have the new Green Ranger on the cover, the unmasking of the new Green Ranger on it, and my logo on the back. It's it's pretty awesome. I'm excited about it. Make sure you head over to joelsarcollectibles.com and the 616comics.com to get you one because it, it's an awesome book, an awesome cover. They have two different covers for it, and they're both priced at $24.99 with a 500 print run, and they're both virgin. So. Yeah, you mentioned John at 616. Can't say enough good things about him. He also provides books for Patreon for, for the 
the uh, Patreon box that we have for that premium tier on this channel as well. Love John to death. Great friend and really enjoyed working with him. And yeah, huge congratulations to you getting your logo on. Not like you said, not just a variant, but like your favorite series and a key issue such as that. Dude, like, I still can't believe it's going to like it's happening. Like when I finally get that book in my hands to see my logo on the back, I may cry. Like that's how exciting it would be because the very first comic book that I picked up when I started collecting comic books was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue zero. That was the very first comic book that I picked up. So I've been reading every single uh, Power Rangers book from issue zero through now. And again, I get my logo on the back of one of those. My favorite series written by Ryan Parrott is absolutely amazing. I'm really excited about it. And John, I cannot think enough from the 616comics.com for making this happen and for me to sponsor my channel from believing in me and working with me. I'm super like happy about it, man. Like words can't describe how, how excited I am. Yeah, huge congratulations to that. So I also want to ask you, I see you have a Funko pop over there, but outside of comics, is there anything else that you collect or is it mostly comics and then kind of sprinkle in the other stuff? So it's, it's like 95% comics. Like I have some lightning collection of figures, which are power Rangers figures. I have all of the, like the, the like red Ranger, green Ranger, blue Ranger, white, uh, white Ranger, yellow Ranger. Like I have the, I have the whole set. I have some team and team NECA. I got a couple of Funkos. I got lots of sports memorabilia. Cause I'm a, I'm a big K state fan, lots of sports stuff, but it's mostly just comic books. Yeah. That's usually what I collect. Uh, just comics. Yes. Yeah. It's like, grew up that childhood it's like i was in that childhood or that age group of where you collected stuff whether it was garbage pail kids and then it was baseball cards and then it was oh, other yeah. trading cards i didn't get into like the pog stuff so much and then i eventually got into comic books and i still kind of dabble in all of it whether it's action figures or garbage pail kids uh funkos of course neca figures and then even like the todd mcfarland sports figures which he's doing all types of figures now but and then, like I said, my, my basement den behind me is full of Florida State memorabilia and um, the Redskins memorabilia, which we don't have a name anymore. Washington but football way. team. Yeah, Washington football team. But Shout out to Alex Smith, the former Kansas City Chiefs quarterback, for coming back from that injury and playing for the Washington football team and doing well for him. So. Yeah, huge. Definitely deserves comeback player of the year. Absolutely. So real quick, before we go, one, one, I appreciate you so much for coming on the channel. And it's great to have you on here because I know you've, I've had the privilege of being on your channel a few times now, but to get you on here, let's say one of the viewers watching right now wants to start a comic book YouTube channel. If you had one piece of advice for that person, what would you say to them? My advice would be to do it. Um, if you want to do it, do it. And do not be afraid to put yourself out there. Like if it's your first few videos, you're not on screen. You're just showing off what books you have. That's fine. Another piece of advice I would do is try to be in as many. Hey, I said one. I'm just messing. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Uh, try to be in as many live stream chats as possible. Try to talk to as many people as possible. Get your name out there. Like the more you do that, the more people you talk to, the more you will grow. So just try to like build your own community. Talk to as many people as possible because those networks do pay off. Like with you and you're talking with me, be announcing all these power ranger books and now i have my own variant like it's it, it pays off in a big way putting yourself out there so do not be afraid to do it and just have fun with it like if you feel like you want to do a video a day every day do it if you feel like you want to do a video once every two weeks do that however much you want to do just do that and just have fun with it yeah i mean the hardest video you ever make is going to be your first one absolutely and you, I don't think you can talk to anyone on YouTube. Oh, I mean, my videos still aren't the greatest, but the first video, it's you, 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 you can go back and watch it later and just be like, man. But, and like you said, I started out, it was voiceover, it was slideshows. And then, then it just kind of gradually moved in front of the camera and don't worry about, you know, having to have the best gear. And I will tell you, if I were to give one hint when it comes to the technical and everything like that, Audio matters more than video. Like your video doesn't have to be the best, but if your audio is like very faint or scratchy or distorted, th th that tends to have a more of an effect on, on your videos than if, if your video is not the best. And if you're going to do live streams, have a good internet. Because I had some issues with that before with the Kansas internet. I've upgraded it. I, I haven't had a problem since. 
But if you're going to do live streams, have a good internet is what I would suggest. Yeah. Live streams, although fun, can be daunting. Very daunting. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't edit that out. <laughs> yeah. For sure. But, but, and, and just like Steve said, I mean, that's what makes this great is it's one big community. And a lot of times you'll find people are happy to help each other out, to, whether it's with comic books or even the behind the scenes stuff with, with YouTube start type things. Uh, I know I've reached out to people asking for questions, asking questions. I've even searched YouTube. There's a bunch of YouTube channels out there that, that help that have YouTube channels about making YouTube channels. So there's yep. a bunch of great resources out there as well. Do not be afraid to ask others for help. Most of the time they will help you with whatever questions you have. Like I've talked to big YouTube channels like you, Reggie, Bueller, every single person I've talked to, like asking for advice, they've always given me good advice. So do not be afraid to ask others for help. That's another thing that I would say. Right. And don't be scared to create. I mean, even if you're going to create, so a lot of people are like, well, I want to do this, but there's so many other channels out there. Yeah. That's a big space. There's a lot of people with, there's a lot of comic book YouTube channels out there, but I always say there's only one you, that's your personality. You can do the same content. There's a lot of similar videos out there, but there's always only one you, and, and that's what makes you your channel. And that's what makes your community, your community. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got, you got to make it unique and a reason for people to come back to see your videos because you're different than everyone else. Whether it's the same content or not, make it unique. So we talked about a lot of great topics on here. And again, make sure you guys go check out Steve's channel. The link to it is in the description of this video. I will also put links to his Instagram so you can follow him on there as well. But Steve, once again, thank you so much for coming on. Dude, I had a great time. I hope to do this again, maybe on your channel again and in my channel again. I, I just like hanging out with you and talking comic books. Thank you for having me on. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll definitely have you on again. And with that being said, guys, it's Brown with Men's Comics. See you guys in the next video.